So before we begin, um, I just want to say a few things. The first thing I want to say is that I know many of you are probably really itching to get started, to start using your computers, to start typing commands, to start, you know, working with all this stuff. And I do too. I think, um, you know, that's the fun part. But um, before, before we get started, I want to kind of go over, you know, what Linux is and kind of give a, a, a broad overview of you know, how, how Linux works and whatnot. So this week we're not going to be doing any installation or anything like that. So in the meantime, um, for the next lesson, what you should do is go to this website here, Salix OS, okay? Click download. Come down here to the one that is the live CD. It says Salix Live. And click, sorry, the 64 bit one. Grab the 64 bit one, Salix Live 64, and click Download from SourceForge. And the download should start. So this is a live CD. Um, what it allows you to do is it allows you to use Linux without actually installing it. So we're not going to install anything with this CD. So don't worry about trying to get anything installed. You're not going to be doing that. We're going to actually be using this CD to build our own Linux. So at this point right now, just download it and next week we will boot into it and start using it. Um, the second thing I wanted to say is that, and I'm not trying to scare anyone off with this, but I just wanted to say that this course is going to be very difficult. And I have in intentionally made the course difficult. Um, the reason being that I made the course difficult is I installed, my first install of Linux was back in 1997 or 98, and it was Slackware 3. And it was incredibly difficult. It took me two weeks to get it installed, another two weeks to get into a, a graphical user interface. It was, you know, just incredibly, incredibly difficult. Um, that is a huge reason why I know what I know today. Because it was difficult, I had to learn all this stuff. I had to work through it. Um, I feel like if I had installed Ubuntu, and had a graphical user environment, I wouldn't have the skill set that I do today. Um, you know, I probably would have just been comfortable sitting in the graphical interface. So, what got me started on this, and why you know I, why I decided I wanted to teach people, is I was teaching my brother, and my brother, is, you know, has been a truck driver most of his life. Uh, he doesn't have a lot of knowledge when it comes to computers. And, you know, I was teaching him and I decided, you know, I'd like to teach a lot of people. So as I'm teaching this, it's going to be difficult, but I'm going to keep my brother in mind. You know, I'm going to keep my brother in the back of my mind and I'm going to make sure that, you know, people don't feel overwhelmed. I'm going to be in the chat. I'm going to be there to help uh, with questions and whatnot. So, yeah, it is going to be difficult, but I'm not... You know, I'm not like a, that redneck father who throws you into the deep end of the pool and says sink or swim. I'm more like um, the suburban dad who drives an SUV because of all the safety features and stuff like that. So, you know, it's going to be difficult, but it's, you know, I'm not going to just let you sink. So with all that said, let's finally get started. And so this lesson, we are going to just have a broad overview of Linux. Um, what Linux is and so for this we're going to be discussing the the kernel kernel space and what an operating system is and so on so Here you have a computer. I imagine everyone knows what this is. I imagine everyone is familiar with this This is a computer Inside of this computer there are components. You have a CPU you have memory you have most likely a hard drive and video card and etc. But these uh, are the components that are inside of this computer. 
um, we refer to these components as the hardware. And they're very powerful components, okay? But without an operating system, you essentially have just a giant, very expensive paperweight. Uh, it's pretty much useless. You can't really do anything with the computer unless you have an operating system. So what is an operating system? An operating system is a piece of software that allows programs to interact with, uh, in other words, to make use of the hardware inside the computer. So some examples of operating systems are Microsoft Windows, Mac OS X, FreeBSD, and Linux. And as you can see, Linux is the same type of software as Windows. These are operating systems. It, Linux is an alternative to Windows. Um, still, we haven't really answered the question, what is Linux? S Linux, at its most minimal, minimal definition, is the kernel. The kernel is the layer in this drawing here. You have your hardware up here. The kernel is the layer that sits between the hardware and the programs that you run. Okay, so for example, Firefox. And what the kernel does is the kernel allows these programs to interact with the hardware. How does it do this? So what exactly does the kernel do? The kernel is, um, well, the Linux kernel is a preemptive multitasking OS. What this basically means is that many programs can run at the same time. Okay, so I can have Firefox open, I can have uh, Google Chrome open, I can have VLC Media Player open, uh, Pigeon open, a terminal window open, so on and so forth. I can have many programs running all at the same time. And what the kernel does is it's in charge of which process gets the CPU, gets to use the CPU, and for how long. That's the preemptive part. So the kernel says, here you go, program, you can use the CPU for a second, and then this one, and so on and so forth. The kernel uh, manages memory. So all processes on the system need to use memory. And the thing is, is you have a finite amount of memory and that memory must be shared between all these processes. So the kernel uses virtual memory management to share the memory between each process, isolating the memory so that processes aren't affecting other processes. So if Firefox is writing and reading to a certain piece of memory, the kernel makes sure that uh, VLC Media Player isn't writing and reading to that same piece of memory. If, uh, if, this, if this wasn't, you know, if the kernel wasn't doing this, um, processes would have no idea, uh, when I say processes, I mean programs, would have no idea what, um, you know, Process A would have no idea what process B is doing, and they're both writing and reading from the same memory, and they, they're all messed up, and you'd have essentially an unstable, unusable computer. So the kernel manages that. <clears throat> the kernel uh, gives you access to devices. So it provides an interface that allows programs to access devices such as the mouse and keyboard. The kernel provides uh, networking, so so routing of packets, um, so you know stuff like that. That that is all provided by the kernel, and the kernel provides an API. Um, an API is a programming interface, so programs uh, uh, have an interface to the kernel, and they can use different system calls from the kernel. I don't have these bullet points in here, but the kernel also does other things. The kernel um, provides a file system, and the file system allows, you know, is a place where you can create, modify, and delete files. The kernel is also in charge of, you know, um, when you run a program, the kernel will allocate system resources, such as the memory, such as CPU, and when you terminate the program, when you terminate the process, when you close it, the kernel frees those resources so that other programs can use them. So kernel space versus user space. 
Um, kernel space is privileged. It is trusted with all system resources. The kernel has um, unfettered access to all system resources. User space is where user processes exist. It is unprivileged. For example, the allocation of new memory is done in kernel space, while reading and writing uh, uh, to already allocated memory is done in user space. So kernel space versus user space. I'll end this lesson with an excerpt from a, I'll censor the email, uh, from an email by uh, Linus Torvalds on the um, uh, Linux kernel mailing list. And he sent this to a kernel developer who submitted a patch, I believe. And the email goes, <clears throat> I've abridged it by the way as well. Moro, shut the F up. It's a bug, all right, in the kernel. If a change results in user programs breaking, it's a bug in the kernel. We never, ever blame the user programs. We do not break user space. We particularly don't break user space with total crap. For your effing compliance tool, or sorry, fix your effing compliance tool because it, because it is obviously broken and fix your approach to kernel programming. The line between kernel space and user space is very serious. So that ends lesson one.